Hello everyone, let's get started. I'm sorry that some of you didn't get to go home and you had to stay at school for this, but you get to do it in the peace and quiet without having a lot of people around and you can focus on your work and hope for the best. That's all that I can say. So we will have a class like this for like 30, 35 minutes, maybe 40, 45, we'll see how it goes. And then the rest of the time you will use to actually do work. You will have some assignments that you have to complete and send to me. All the sentences and notes, everything from the class, you should send to me. You should send stuff to me because then I can assess who was here and who was not, or who at least went through the trouble of getting the assignment ready wherever they were. This is what we're doing now. We're going to talk about a novel named Slam. Have you ever heard about that novel? Come on, have you ever heard about that novel, yes or no? I'm guessing a lot of you have not. I don't know how how much you like books. Do you like reading? And I'm making this face not for myself because I love reading books, but I know that a lot of people don't. So let's take a look. On your book, you have parts of this book for us to talk about. Slam. When you think about the name of it, you might be thinking it deals with a completely different thing than it actually does. Have you ever heard about the author, Nick Hornby? Have you? He's um, associated with some motion pictures as well that have been made out of his books, like About a Boy, which is, I'm, I'm sure that you guys will think that this is a very old movie. I think it was 2003, 2004, something like that. They made a movie out of it, the book About a Boy. But to me, anything, to th anything after the year 2000, feels fairly new. If you talk about something old, oh, an old movie, I'm thinking a movie, a black and white movie from 1932. That's an old movie for me. So let's talk about the novel a little bit. I don't know how anyone in here can relate to it, and I'm hoping that most of you can't relate to it. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you just a second. Just a second. Here we go. Here is the book on Amazon. Slam. And um, Amazon has a feature called Look Inside. So you can actually look And it even, if you look at this, see what I just mentioned to you about a boy. If you've seen the movie, sometimes they show this movie at around Christmas time. And it's about a little boy who was very awkward. He was a bit different from the other kids. He liked singing. Out of nowhere, he would start singing. And people made fun of him. And he had a very hard time at school. And he actually begins a friendship with an older man. But it's nothing, it's nothing creepy or horrible. It really is a friendship. But anyway, that's about a boy. This book here, Slam, and we're looking inside it. Here we go. 
and the way that it starts. So things were ticking along quite nicely. In fact, I'd say that good stuff had been happening pretty solidly for about six months. For example, Mom got rid of Steve, her rubbish boyfriend. Do you remember this? We actually read a little bit of this earlier this year. You may not remember. It was a text that we read a few weeks ago. I'm going to say months ago. So this is from the point of view of a teenager. And this is something you can relate to. Because all the way up until you're 19 years old, you're still a teenager. So this book, if you decide to read the whole book, you can buy it on Amazon. And no, they did not pay me to say that. I am saying it because I want to say it. So here is what we're going to do. We're going to listen and read. I'm going to say something that kind of gets to me a little bit. I'm not the type of teacher that yells at kids, that slams tables and yeah, I'm not that kind of that kind of teacher, but I do get upset sometimes, not for so much for myself, but what you're missing out on when you refuse to do certain things. Here is one huge pet peeve of mine when students say, oh, no, I'm, I'm just going to listen to it and I'm going to call her while I do it. Oh, no, I'm just going to listen to it and I'm going to look at my phone while I do it and I'm going to snap chat somebody yeah no 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 that's that 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 doesn't go and yes I understand that lots of people like to listen and take in their the ideas and everything and that's fantastic but the reason why you have the text written and also an audio file is that you can train your ability to connect what you're listening to, to what the words look like. So while you're listening, you should look at the words. And some people may say, no, I have a learning disability. I have trouble reading. And this is actually an exercise to help you. If you try to focus on the words as you listen, you get perhaps, you know what you can do? You can use like um, you can use a, a pencil or a pen and you can follow the words as you listen. So it's a very important exercise that some of you in all my, my classes, I'm not going to say all of you, but some of you refuse to do. I put on an audio file and I look around and people are like, Now, nobody's filing their nails or anything, but people are looking around, they're coloring. You should be looking at the words. And I don't want to hear the excuses, this and this and this and that. Try it. And it only takes a few minutes. Nowadays, people are living to be a hundred years old plus. I'm only asking for a few minutes out of your long life that you have ahead of you to look at the text as you listen. That's all. All right. So please open your books to the page that I just wrote in the chat box. And listen and read. Listen and look at the words. It is really important. You will improve your spelling. You will improve even your pronunciation. Please look at the words while you listen. I can't make sure that this is happening. I can't even go around like I sometimes do. Hey, hey, open your book. Come on, son. Open your book and look at it. Come on, sweetheart. Open your book. Look, look at the words. Here's the page. I can't go around and do that because you're sitting in your house 
and you can be like, nah, 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 I'm just going to look around or I'm going to call her. But you're only fooling yourself and you're missing out on an opportunity. So, oh well. Yes, open your book to that page that I just wrote in the chat box. And I'm purposely saying that and not saying the page because I want you to focus on everything right now. Here we go. I'm going to stop and ask questions throughout the time while we're listening. Slam by Nick Hornby. The next day, my 16th birthday, my life started to change. The day began with cards and presents and donuts. Mum had already been to the baker's by the time I woke up. My dad was supposed to be coming over for tea and cake in the afternoon. And in the evening, believe it or not, Mum and I were going to Pizza Express and the cinema. I got the first text from Alicia straight after breakfast. It just said, I need to see you, urgent, A, X, X. Who is that? said Mum. Oh, no one. Is that a miss no one? said Mum. She was probably thinking of Nicky because she knew we'd been out the previous evening. Not really, I said. Okay, so the first minute has gone by. And I'm going to ask you a few questions about what's going on. All right. So why is this day special for this girl? Why is it a special day? Boy or girl, we'll see. I don't want to say too much. Okay, it's the person's birthday. How old is this person turning? I already gave it up and told you it's a teenager, but how old? That's correct. And something happens. They get a text. Who is the text from? Very good. Very good. So you're paying attention to that. Now, the mom is like, oh, who was that? And what, what did the person answer? Who was that? The person answered, no one. And I've, I've, I've heard that before. I have a teenage daughter. So it's like, what are you doing? Nothing. They're clearly texting or writing something and doing something, but if you ask them and they don't want to tell you, they'll, they go, nothing. Who was that? No one. It's very, very familiar to me. So let's continue to listen. I went and locked myself in the bathroom and texted her back. I said, not today, my birthday, S, X, X. If I got something back from that, then I knew I was in trouble. My phone beeped again. The text just said, Urgent, our Starbucks, 11 a.m. And then all of me knew. Guts, head, heart, fingernails. I texted back, OK. I didn't see how I could do anything else, even though I wanted to do anything else. When I went back into the kitchen, I wanted to sit on my mum's lap. I know that sounds stupid and babyish, but I couldn't help it. On my 16th birthday, I didn't want to be 16, or 15, or any teen. I wanted to be three or four, and too young to make any kind of mess, apart from the mess you make when you scribble on walls or tip your food bowls upside down.
All right. So this person is now feeling how? How is this person feeling now? If you had to describe it in one word. They got a text. And what does the text say? The text says urgent. Urgent, right? What does the word urgent mean to you? In our region would be note situation. Note situation. An urgent situation, something that you have to act on immediately. So the person is starting to feel like something is wrong because they got this message saying urgent. And now something interesting that the person said. What do they want to do? Those of you who wrote that the person felt like sitting on the mom's lap, that is correct. That is correct. They wanted to sit on their mom's lap. And why? Because of this whole situation, something urgent is going on. And at that very moment, the person didn't want to be 16, 17, or any kind of teen. And they started to talk about simple things that a person deals with when they're not a teenager, when they are little. And the only trouble they get into is if they write something on the walls, if they break something, right? And at the very beginning of this passage, and I want you to look at the words now and tell me, they mention some parts of the body because they can feel all the stuff that's going on. They feel it with their whole body, but they mention some parts of the body. Can you scan the text really quickly and type in the chat box the parts of the body that you see? Gut is one. Mage. Gut. What else? Fingernails is another one. So they started to feel that whole situation coming upon them with their whole body. It's like when you're really nervous and maybe your stomach starts to hurt or maybe you start to sweat, you start to feel something. Let's continue and I'll stop and ask more questions. I love you, Mum. I said when I sat down at the table. She looked at me as if I'd gone mad. I mean, she was pleased, but she was pretty surprised. I love you too, sweetheart, she said. I tried not to get choked up. If Alicia was going to tell me what I thought she was going to tell me, I reckoned it would be a long time before Mum said that again. It might be a long time before she even felt it. All the way there, I was doing all kinds of deals, or trying to. You know the sort of thing. If it's okay, I'll never skate again. As if it had anything to do with skating. I offered never to watch TV again, and never to go out again, and never to eat McDonald's again. Sex never came up, because I already knew I was never going to have sex again, so that didn't seem like a deal God would be interested in. All right, so now we're beginning to get an idea of what's going on. This person, I'm saying person because I want you to point it out to me if you think it's a boy or a girl who's telling the story, all right? The person is saying, I think Alicia is going to tell me something. So what is this something that Alicia is going to tell him, Alicia or Alicia? I guess you can pronounce it in different ways, depending on how it's spelled or how people want it to pronounce, to be pronounced. Anyway, so the person is starting to panic and they made deals with God. 
You're telling God, okay, God, I'll never skate again. I'll never eat McDonald's again. But the last thing that they mentioned was sex. And the person said they would never have sex again. So now we're getting close to finding out what the person is going to tell. What Alicia is going to tell this person. And it's something that's freaking them out. Because they're like, oh, whoa. You're nervous. I might as well have promised him that I wouldn't fly to the moon or run down Essex Road naked. Sex was over for me, forever, no doubt. Alicia was sitting at the long counter in the window with her back to everyone. I saw her face as I was walking in without her seeing me, and she looked pale and frightened. Happy birthday, she said. And then, I'm late. I understood straight away what she meant. You were here before me, even, I said. I couldn't resist it. I wasn't trying to be funny, and I wasn't being thick. I was just putting off the moment, hanging on to the old Sam. I didn't want the future to come, and what Alicia was about to say was the future. I'm late with my period, she said straight away, and that was it. The future had arrived. How late are you? Three weeks. Three weeks sounded very late to me, but what did I know? Have you ever been three weeks late before? I said. No, nowhere near. And then I'd run out of questions. I'd run out of questions that I could actually ask anyway. So what did the girl tell Sam? Now I'll reveal to you Sam and Alicia are having a conversation. Or Sam and Alicia, if you prefer. What did she tell him? I'm just waiting to see if the right answer is going to pop up in the chat box. She told him that she was late with her period. And what could that possibly mean? Remember, we're talking about a 16-year-old and it's his birthday today. So she could be pregnant. And he is obviously very scared. He's obviously very, very scared. You can only imagine. He's talking about skating. He's talking about eating at McDonald's, not having a care in the world, and all of a sudden, he has to deal with maybe fatherhood. If you search for the synopsis of this novel, you'll find a summary of it, just for you to know. The novel's protagonist, what's a protagonist? I've told you this on several occasions, so you should remember it by now. The novel's protagonist, if you're typing in the chat box that the protagonist is the main character, you're right. The novel's protagonist is a troubled 16-year-old skateboarder, Sam, who lives in London, UK. His mother, Annie, gave birth to him when she was just 16. They therefore have an unconventional relationship. He has a poster of Tony Hawk in his room that serves as his friend and confidant. Sam's two best friends are Rabbit and Rubbish, two skateboarders. Sam's father, Dave, is somewhat estranged from the family, visiting them only occasionally. After being introduced to Alicia, or Alicia, at a party thrown by Annie's co-worker, Andrea, or Andrea, Sam and Alicia start dating. He believes he is in love with her and visits her numerous times almost daily, in which they have sex several times. However, 
One time Sam and Alicia try having sex not wearing protection. Sam knows that due to him having sex with Alicia without a condom, she might be pregnant. He's just not ready to be a father. So at this moment, everything's exploding in his face because she's just telling him that she's late. And she's not just like, oh, I'm just um, a week, a couple of days late. She's, how long? Did you get that? How long? Three weeks late. So anybody would be super nervous. Anyway, let's keep looking at this. If you look at the summary for the novel, you can find the summary for the novel anywhere. I wanted to ask things like, am I going to be okay? Are your parents going to kill me? Do you mind if I go to college anyway? Can I go home now? Stuff like that. But these were all questions about me, and I was pretty sure that I was supposed to ask questions about her. Her and it. I have some questions for you. I hope everyone's awake. All right, so first of all, I'd like you to type in the chat box two of the questions that Sam was, he was confused and extremely nervous and a, couple, a few questions were going on in his head that he wanted to ask her. Type in the chat box two of the questions. Yes. Those of you who put in, can I go home now? Am I going to be okay? Do you mind if I still go to college? If you typed any of those, you were right. Another question that I have to ask about this segment that we just heard. He used two pronouns. He said, I should ask about her and it. Those two pronouns that he used, who was he referring to? Type in the chat box. Who was he referring to? He was referring to Alicia or Alicia with her and it. He was referring to the baby. Why do we sometimes refer to babies as it? Some of you may be saying because we don't know when we don't know whether the baby is a boy or a girl yet, right? That's one reason we might refer to the baby as it. And this is not any official reason to do so. It has nothing to do with grammar or anything, but some people are not into children. They're, they're not, not into children like that. Like they're not like, some people prefer pets, and I know a lot of people like that. They're great with animals, and they're like, oh, my little doggy, dee, 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 dee. and then they see a baby, they're like, eh, I've seen that. Or they're like, oh, no, I love children, but they really prefer animals, and it's, some people are just not like that. Some people prefer pets, and they're better off having a pet than procreating and having children. People who are not good with children and who don't like children should not have children. But in this situation here, when he says it, he's referring to the baby. Either because he doesn't like, we don't know this. We don't know how the character feels, the protagonist of the story, the main character of the story. We don't know how he feels, but we do know that at this point they don't even know if she really is pregnant so they can't possibly know if it's a boy or a girl so it would be the correct pronoun under those circumstances can you just buy pregnancy tests in a chemist there that was another good question I didn't care whether you could or couldn't but it was something to say yeah are they expensive? 
I don't know. Let's go and have a look. There was a little chemist's next door to the Starbucks, so we went in there. But we got out quick when Alicia saw a friend of her mum's in there. We walked on to the superdrug round the corner, because it seemed like we wouldn't stick out there. The cheapest was £9.95. How much have you got? Alicia said. Me? Yes, you. I fished about in my pockets. Three quid? You? A fiver and sixty pence in change. One of us is going to have to go home for more money. She sighed. Okay. Wait here. I went back to Starbucks, spent my three quid, waited twenty-five minutes, and then went home. And I turned my mobile off and left it turned off. Okay, so this turns into an interesting... Now let's play fast and loose with the word interesting so we don't we don't say something else. So what did Sam decide to do? They were still having a conversation about this. What what did they decide to do? They don't know she's pregnant for sure. So what did they do? They started discussing getting a pregnancy test, right? And they were going to buy one. Why didn't they go in to buy one straight away? They used a very specific word for pharmacy or drugstore. In America, we say drugstore more or pharmacy. But in New Zealand and Australia and in, the great, in Great Britain, they say chemist. They wanted to go into the chemist to buy one. But they didn't go in because a friend of her mom's was in there. So after that, they put their money together. They needed how much money to buy the pregnancy test. How much was the cheapest pregnancy test that they saw? Nine pounds. Did they have all the money for it? No, they didn't. So they needed to put together their cash and then they decided that one of them was going to have to go home for more money. And that's when Sam, does Sam go home to get more money? No, he doesn't. He turns off his phone. He actually goes to Starbucks uses the money that he has to have some coffee or whatever he drank. He just went home and turned off his phone. Basically saying, whatever. Now, here's what you're going to do. Here's your assignment. I want you to tell me what your opinion is of what this boy just did. Do you think he did the right thing by not helping her, giving her a pregnancy test, by just blowing her off and going home? Or do you think perhaps he was wrong? He shouldn't have done that. He should have sat with her and talked more with her. He should have gotten the money and he should have come back and paid for the pregnancy test and waited for her to take it and make decisions with her. So I want you to write your opinion. All right. So you will use the rest of today's class to write this down. 
here is where you might not like me too much for this but according to one of my students everyone already hates me right so it doesn't matter what I tell you to do or not I'd like you to write a paragraph I want the paragraph to have a topic sentence meaning your first sentence or somewhere in the paragraph you have to state your opinion very clearly and I want you to write between 10 and 12 sentences not just loose sentences as part of a paragraph Avsnit Där ska skriva ett avsnitt om det Där ska i deras mening om vad Sam har gjort Så där ska läsa, vi ska inte ha förstått allt som står där Läs på nytt och pröv och översätta det Det är inte det som är uppgiven. Det tränger inte att översätta skriftligt. Det ska skriva ett avsnitt om vad deras mening är om det. Write your opinion about what Sam did. Was it the right thing to do? To just run away from that problem? Or should he have sat with her and should he have stuck around to help her? And I want you to give your reasons why you think this was right or wrong. I don't want just one sentence. I think what he did was bad. The end. No. Just no, no, no. I want you to write a paragraph saying, if you want to start your paragraph by saying, in my opinion, it was wrong of Sam to walk away. Period. The reason why I think so is that, in my opinion, a man should help a woman in a situation like that. So I want you to write your reasons for it. All right, between 10 and 12 sentences, and it's a paragraph with a cohesive set of ideas. I don't want loose sentences. And remember that list of mistakes that I gave you. I do not want to see any of those mistakes again because we have been talking about them over and over and over and over. All right. So now we're going to do a couple of rounds of we're going to do two rounds of Quizlet Live with vocabulary. And after that, you're going to sit and do the work. And the work today is you're going to write your opinion about what Sam did to Alicia or Alicia if you prefer. Let's play two rounds of Quizlet Live. You're going to get a code form from me really soon. And when you get the code from me, I'm just giving you some time to some time to go and I want you to make sure to have your, but I feel like, I feel like it's safe to say you are all, you always have your phones charged, I feel like. So here's what you're going to do. Two rounds of Quizlet Live and then you're going to send me you have all the way until the rest of the day to send me to send me your paragraph stating your opinion about what this boy did to his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend I don't want to say too much because Maybe you want to read the book, Slam. All right, you have the code. Everybody, please 
make sure that you get into Quizlet Live. There are between 15 and 20 of you. And I expect to see everybody participate because this is also part of the class. You will be seeing some of the you will be seeing some of the questions on the screen, but try not to try not to cheat though. Do your do your own thing. Use your head and what you know. As soon as everybody's in, we can start. forget you're going to write a paragraph explaining what you think of the boys attitude in the book slam the part that we read about it the girl is trying to find out if she's really pregnant they need a pregnancy test and instead of sitting with her and comforting her he just runs for the hills so what do you think about that was he right was he just scared do you understand him do you think this was fair? Was this unfair? I do not want just a one sentence. 
I think it was bad or oh I think it was okay no I want you to write in my opinion I don't think what he did was right because I want sentences all right I want a paragraph that is kaskrivet absnit. Send it to me either via email, canvas, anywhere where you can reach me online. I'm extremely easy to find. There's no excuse. Oh, I didn't. Know, I couldn't find you. Oh, if you Google my name, it's you can find so many different types of social media to send this to me. I'll find it. All right, send it to me. I'll find it. I'll correct it. I'll give you feedback. Have a nice rest of the day. Be good.